We hope you have a box of tissues nearby. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 saddest crazy ex-girlfriend moments. It's like I was out of stories to tell myself that things would be okay. I just feel like I inconvenienced a lot of people. No, no, no. We'll be taking a look at moments in the show's four seasons that brought tears to our eyes. Please note, spoilers abound. Number 10, Rebecca lashes out at her friends. Rebecca, wait, we need to talk about this. When Rebecca's past finally catches up with her and her friends, they all run to her side and attempt to help the only way they know how. Unfortunately, she feels ambushed and becomes defensive, lashing out and viciously targeting their insecurities. Hey Valencia, you know what's upsetting? I'm forcing your dream wedding on someone else because no one wants to actually marry you. It breaks our hearts to see Rebecca spiral out of control, but as hurtful as her comments are, we ultimately wind up feeling, above all else, sympathetic. You know what? If I'm crazy, you made me crazier because you made me do terrible things, because your life is broken and boring. The more she feels trapped, the crueler her comments become, but it's still a clear cry for help. After she storms out, we watch her continue to sink deeper into that dark place until she finally hits rock bottom. It's like, before you tell me to help myself, maybe you should like help yourselves. Bunch out! Number nine, the truth about Rebecca's dad. I just wanted to see you, dad. How did you get here? Rebecca always believed that her mom was the reason that she never got to see her dad growing up. But in a flashback to her childhood, she learns that isn't quite the case. Becca, get your things and get in the car. No. Becca. No, you can't make Listen me! Listen to me! Young Rebecca is understandably super excited to spend time with her dad, which only makes it all the more heart-wrenching when it becomes painfully clear that the feeling isn't mutual. Why do you have to make me take her back right away? Can't you just spend time with her for a couple of days? The argument between Rebecca's parents is tough to watch. Her mom pleads with her dad to spend time with his daughter, but to no avail. Making this heavy dose of heartbreak even worse is the fact that Rebecca can't recognize that her mother was acting out of love for her in this moment. Please don't tell her. She won't understand. Don't worry, I won't tell her. Not for your sake, but for hers. So she'll never know what you're capable of. Number eight, Audra has a meltdown. Is there any chance that, that you would go to Vegas and, and bring her back home? After Rebecca abandoned her seemingly perfect life in New York, frenemy Audra Levine felt she finally had the upper hand in their rivalry. When the pressures of being perfect get too hard, however, she abandons her family and moves to Vegas, taking a page out of Rebecca's book. Hi, you're using me as justification for abandoning your three very, very tiny children? Rebecca tells Audra that she still struggles with her decisions on a daily basis, causing the former frenemies to finally confront reality. I struggle with making decisions every day, and I probably will for the rest of my life. I mean, I came to Vegas just to avoid making a decision. Audra is usually the character we love to hate, but at this moment, we can't help but feel sorry for her. Let me ask you something. Did you run away because you really don't love your husband and kids, or because it just got hard? Because it got hard. Number seven, Nathaniel's mom. Wishing you the best after your suicide attempt. Yours, Nathaniel J. Plimpton III, Esquire. After Rebecca's suicide attempt, Nathaniel wants to reach out, but something is holding him back. A photo on his desk brings up a repressed memory from his childhood, so he goes to confront his parents about it. At first, they refuse to discuss the issue, but eventually his mom realizes it's time to be open and frank about the past. When you were 10, I was going through a hard time. I made a mistake with my sleeping pills. We defy you not to tear up when Nathaniel tells his mom he loves her and that he's there for her, especially since he then finally finds the right words to say to Rebecca. I love you, mom. And I want you to know that if you ever need me, I'm here. Number six, women in prison tell their stories. Okay, we put that piece up. I mean, I'm sure that all of you have the most amazing stories filled with drama and romance and, and meaning. I have the talking balloon. Crazy ex-girlfriend never shies away from harsh realities or tough subject matter. While in prison, Rebecca urges her fellow inmates to use their stories to put on a musical. What's your story, story, story? 
What's your crime? However, in stark contrast to the cell block tango, from which this song takes inspiration, there's nothing sexy about these women's tales. Well, did you at least tell the cops that it was his man? I mean, I could have turned him in, but my boyfriend and I have a son. I can't risk our child having both parents in jail. Only Rebecca is committed to adding some razzle-dazzle to the song, while the other women provide bleak anecdotes that highlight the grim truth of the criminal justice system. Oh, hey, I stole a sweater too. I got two months. How long are you in for? Three years. I'm so sorry. By the end of the song, we're feeling as deflated as Rebecca. Number five, Paula has a heart attack. This episode was praised for showing symptoms of heart disease normally not shown on TV or movies, and how they differ between women and men. Look, I don't know. I just, I feel achy and lethargic and I am burning up. I just, I don't know what it is. Mm. As always, Paula is overworked with no signs of slowing down, even when she's feeling under the weather. Mrs. Hernandez convinces her to visit the gynecologist to see if it's the onset of menopause. But sadly, the diagnosis is far more dire. Well, I'll tell you what, it is possible that you're starting to go through menopause, but I think you're also having a heart attack. It's hard not to get choked up when Paula tells Rebecca she doesn't have time to be ill, but promises to take better care of herself. I just, I didn't have time to be sick. Okay, no one has time to be sick. But you have to take better care of yourself. I know that now. Number four, Valencia and Father Bra. Eventually, lab partner says, I love you. <gasps> you need to choose Josh or me. It's anything hotter than an ultimatum. In the love story none of us saw coming, Valencia confesses to Heather that Father Bra is the one that got away. She always assumed that he simply didn't love her the same way, until she discovers that he never actually received the letter that she wrote to him declaring her love. That's my jacket. I thought I lost that on the last day of school. <laughs> what? It was Father Bra? Joseph. He never got the letter. Sadly, it's 12 years too late when he eventually gets her note, but the star-crossed lovers finally get some closure on what might have been. It's bittersweet as they admit they've missed their chance to be together, but they're both happy with the way their lives turned out. We missed our shot, V. Yeah, I guess we did. And that's okay, because now we know that we felt the same way about each other. Number three, season two finale. The episode is called Can Josh Take a Leap of Faith? And spoiler, the answer it turns out is no. Uh, there's been a very, very slight delay. But don't worry, Father Bra is talking to Josh, so it should all be just fine. Rebecca thinks getting married will solve all of her problems. So when she learns of her runaway groom, she goes into meltdown. Josh is leaving me to become a priest. She ponders why every man she's ever loved leaves her, and blames herself for all of her failed relationships, including the one with her father. While Paula assures her that this is not the case, it only ignites Rebecca's fury, and it's devastatingly clear that she's headed down a slippery slope. It's my fault. It's my fault they don't love me. Number two, Dr. Akopian tells Rebecca she deserves love. When Nathaniel confesses his feelings to Rebecca, she's afraid to reciprocate, based on her previous experiences. Why do you think your feelings don't matter? Because relationships do not work for me. Did not work for you. You're a different person than the last time you tried. Dr. Akopian tries to reason with her that she's not the person she used to be, but that brings little comfort. The therapist then proceeds to tell Rebecca that she deserves love, in a moment that's likely to bring you to tears. You need and deserve love. It's okay for you to have it. And if that doesn't do, Rebecca's answer definitely will. I know what I'm capable of when I feel abandoned. I can go to a really dark place, and it's a place where I can hurt myself, and I, I never want to be in that place again, ever. Dr. Akopian tells Rebecca that while she understands her fears, she hopes one day Rebecca will learn that she deserves love, and we couldn't agree more. As a person who has known you for a long time, you're more stable and self-aware than you were, and you're a loving person who deserves love. One day I hope you believe that. Dr. Akopian knows what she's talking about. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. 
This is a mistake. You promised me so many times that you wouldn't lie to me anymore. I trusted you. I didn't even check on what you told me about Trent because I just believed you. Please, let me be happy. I want you to be happy, I do. If you really love me, you have to let me go. Please. Of course, Dan. She's having a party. You call that a party? That's her and her three loser friends. You couldn't even throw her a decent party. Then why don't you call your whore and ask her what she would do? The truth is... Oh, this is so hard to do because I... I love you a lot, but... I'm not happy anymore because of this. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rebecca Overdoses Mental health is a major theme throughout the series, and this episode brought Rebecca and the show to its darkest place. Your life is broken and boring. Your boyfriend does not want a baby with you. If I'm crazy, you made me crazier. Feeling completely trapped and at a loss, Rebecca decides to overdose on her mom's anti-anxiety medication. What breaks us is when Rebecca tells Paula that she didn't want to die, she just wanted the pain to stop. Oh, I'm so embarrassed that I caused such a scene. And I didn't, I didn't even want to die. I just wanted the pain to stop. It's so hard to watch, and we sincerely doubt that there was a single dry-eyed viewer when this episode aired. Thankfully, it ends with a message of hope, as Rebecca decides to reach out and get help. Hi, everything okay? I need help. Who knew a show could be so funny and so devastating at the same time? But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. And don't forget to check out this video.